Yeah. After this, the price definitely gotta go up. Oh. Here. What's good? What's good? What's good with you, bro? What's good, gang? Man, pleasure to meet you, bro. Very pleasure hard music. You, bro. We was hey. just listening. Yeah, what? What's your name, bro? I'm sorry. Uh, Philip. Philip, nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you, bro. Yeah, we was just like listening to your music, doing a little, you know, doing a little run on your music, and we was playing admissions, and you was talking crazy on that, on that. I don't know yeah. what you got in that booth and made that song, but <laughs> it's crazy, bro. Life is just crazy. Honestly, yeah. like, a lot of times like, when I wrote that song, it was it was probably one of the most intentional records that I had ever wrote because like, when I got, I was in the, I got. All right, let me just run back. Give y'all a real, real quick rundown. So I was in the studio in LA recording like the uh, the songs for Admissions, the EP. Um, and at the same time, I was being scouted by a lot of different like um, A and Rs and and labels and stuff. So I was in LA just having meetings all the time, and I actually got a chance to record Admissions um, at one of Atlantic Records Studios. Yeah, that's if people don't know, that's a major studio. Yeah, at one yeah. At, it was actually at Universal Studios, which I believe they have a um, they have a few rooms inside of that that place. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it was crazy. It was really, really one of like the most intentional like sessions that I had ever had, man. It was a little heartbreak that I never got over. Mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of that spill into like sometimes you know later mm -hmm. chips and shit. But I was at such a pivotal moment in my life and my career that that shit was still haunting me. I was like. Whatever, let me just fucking write about it. And then yeah. I did that, and honestly, that was the last time I ever really thought about it. <laughs> yeah. Is that how the process is normally for you? Is it, like, personal like that, or is it kind of just, like, we just going to vibe out and just, I'm going to just say whatever? It, yeah, it, like like I said, it was at one of the most inten intentional uh, moments in my life. So, like, I wanted to say something. I needed to say something real at that time. You feel me? I had, I, it was on my chest, and I just wanted to talk about it because it kept, you know, haunting me and shit. And I felt like I was over it, you know, to where I felt I could rip, like sing, sing about it and everything. So I just was just trying to get that out of out of the way. But yeah, it's it's usually a pretty personal process every time I step in the um, in the lab, because um, I'm not an emotional person. Like I don't like to like, I don't. I'm really. I like to be quiet. And if I'm if I'm not quiet, I like to just be goofing around. Like I like to just have fun. Like yeah. I don't really like doing too much like that coming out of you, people getting you to come out of your body type shit and yeah all this like getting getting uh revenge and all of that shit like i done been there done that shit so many times and it backfired on me in ways that you know didn't progress my life or my career so everything i said in that mission was kind of like really like you know not even everything that i would have really wanted to do but you know on a radio friendly le aspect that's where we was at with it yeah what what's the vibe like in the studio though because you said you kind of just like chill kind of laid back What's the I, here, bro. Be, I, a lot of people. I pull up with me, my chill and my laid back. I be I pull up with a fucking pack for me. For me. <laughs> Got to pull up with a pack in a bottle already. Or had a blunt roll for me the minute we get in there. And yeah. then, like, cause like, I be I be very present anywhere I go. I'm just like, hey, if I'm here, nigga, you gonna have to hear this shit. If I went through some shit today, nigga, you gotta hear this, bro. <laughs> and I really, that's that's just how how most of my songs start. They start off as conversations and like on some just real nigga shit, bro. Just coming in from a long day. Like I, we have, mo I got multiple lives. I got my 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 real life, and I have my music life, and then I have my my entrepreneur life as a businessman. So like when I'm in the studio, I'm an artist. You feel me? And nine times out of ten, when I'm in the studio, I'm before I get to the studio, I'm trying to condition myself out of like CEO mode, or trying to condition myself out of like family mode, like you know, trying to like not let shit from that got that I gotta do on the weekend with the family, you know, MP on what the fuck my purpose and my intent. Like, you know, is on where I'm spending my, my money and my time. No, nah, that's facts. And if anybody has, like, followed you on Twitter or something for a while, you're very open with everything you do. And you do talk about, like, investing in real estate and all that stuff. So where did that start from? And what's that looking for you right now? Ten years ago today, I, I wanted to go to college. I started applying for colleges, and I got denied from every college that I applied to only thing I wanted to do was business. I didn't want to be an artist. I didn't want to do none of that. But I could sing, you feel me? So I was doing YouTube naturally. So 10 years ago, literally this year, I put my first video up on YouTube. And like ever since, you know, every time the opportunity came to me from that, I just, I never forgot like, yo, 
real estate were really where it's at. I always knew that the industry was not really where the bread was, especially when you just starting off. Like, you ain't gonna get nothing because you got you food to everybody. You feel me? So motherfuckers just gonna play with you like you food on their plate. If you ain't sitting at the table and you been eating already, like niggas ain't about to sit here and like eat with you. Mm-hmm. He about, about to eat your ass. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? Nah, that's a fact, and you have a unique experience because you've Good, I guess. played. You said what? My boy Edgar just jumped in here. No, uh, nah, you you played. You you've been entangled with a label before, so you've kind of seen like every single angle of how the business works. Yeah, I've seen a lot of different angles, man. And it's- yeah, like how how did like when you were going through your situation with uh the label and you're going through the situation where labels are looking at you and you're also in the phase where you know you're independent and you know you're trying to figure out the financials like how does that affect the art like just what i was saying before you know you you got different hats you got to put on so um i read a lot of a lot of books to understand that better because i would block a lot of my own blessings because i just want to be me 24 7 you feel me but respectfully honestly what makes us as fucking dope as we are, just as, I'm gonna say black people first, what makes us so fucking dope is that we could put on, we could be multiple people when we need to be. We could be anybody we need to be. Feel me? White people will be fucked up sometimes if, you know, we, we sometimes, you know, slip up and like act a little too hood. Yeah. Like, yeah. But who's that? Like, mm-hmm. you know? So it's really more so just about me having the self awareness and, and self control to just take on certain hats to, and take certain hats up, take certain hats on and off mm-hmm. when, it's, when it's time. Like, you feel me? When it's time to work, time to work, time to get sick. Yeah. Yeah. So you, because you have so many hats, when you come in the studio, it's like, all right, we got to get straight to business because I don't, I got a lot of stuff to do. Or is it kind of just like the studio is a place to kind of decompress, kind of like just take off all those hats and just kind of relax for a bit? Which one is it? It it varies. Like if I'm, if I'm in the studio working with new people, if I'm in the studio working with people who don't know me, I know I got to keep that CEO hat on. But it's to an ex- to an extent because people are already going to be expecting me to kind of be more laid back. So with the CEO hat on in the studio, I don't really got to be as like like anal or like you know administrative or anything as far as like oh yo you you playing too much you talking too much what the fuck I don't got to be like that and I don't like being like that. But if I know you know if if something is distracting me and it's really fucking me up, I I might be an asshole move from your perspective, but for me yeah you fucking up my vibe bro. Like, you move like go sorry. You know, I've done it before, not too often, but like I'm, I just try to be as real and as open as possible, bro. Real shit. We all human beings, bro. And I feel like because motherfuckers do music, and you know, we 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 communicate with people in ways that maybe they don't communicate with like normal people. You know, I feel mm-hmm. like sometimes that shit can get lost in translation. Yeah, exactly. So you talked about going on YouTube, putting out your first YouTube video ten years ago. Well, ten years later, you got what? How many subscribers? Uh, well, right you now, like, I think 130, yeah. like 50, that. Something like that. You up right now. So <laughs> how did you build that? Like, that's a big YouTube following. That's not, not everybody can say they got 100 plus. Got the plaque to the pro, nigga. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> MBGY, right. boy. <laughs> rightfully so. Rightfully so. How did you yeah. build that up? Because it, it takes time, I know. Well, it definitely it wasn't all just, you know, just me. Um, it, well, I started the, the channel back in 2013, 2013 or 20, yeah, 2013 I started it. I had my own channel though, like on 2011. Um, I found my, my manager found me through that. And then from there, we started to like do, do things more, uh, more organized and everything. And I had created a page called Chris Aaron. I was in a duo and everything. You know, we had a little bit of success here and there, but um, we, I was just doing it to get in the industry. My family was in the industry. I was getting it, doing it to get into the industry because I saw my family do it. But, you know, the I was just trying to get money from it. I couldn't afford to go to college. I, all my dreams of being a businessman was shot down, and this was my only fucking shot. So uh, he hit me up, and then, you know, YouTube started working out, and I didn't know nothing, bro. I didn't know nothing. I didn't even think I was that great of a singer, but shit, I'm getting attention. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Bitches in school talking to me now in the halls, like, <laughs> You feel me? Like I'm getting a lot of different. I'm I'm doing something good, basically. For the first time in my life, something is working for me. So I just kept working, working it and working it and working it. And there was years when I just didn't do anything on YouTube for like a year, two years, and I completely rebranded in 2016. 
and but I kept you know the same the same account and everything. We had about like sixty thousand, and I just like I said, I just kept some of our old videos up, and then I just kept putting my new shit out. I did attention. I started the Friday Fills uh, series, and then I also started to understand the power of a uh, of cross platform promotion a lot more too. Mm -hmm. So I started to go heavier on SoundCloud because I saw a lot of my SoundCloud uh, followers was really actually putting me on to a lot of shit on YouTube. So then you know used to drop. That sent my subscribers going even more. It was just more so, bro, just really just continuously not being afraid to just try different shit. Shit falls down, bridges burn, and shit really do fall off to the ground, but it's never the end of the world. And that's what I had to understand. Like, I got to get back up and just not be afraid to get back up. Like, sometimes you do be too defeated and too embarrassed to get back up and go outside. Like, after you got your ass whooped, like, who would? Mm -hmm. You feel me? But at the same time, a real motherfucker won't be able to shake the nigga hand. If you got your ass whooped, hey, cool, I got my ass whooped. Real right. Shit. Bro, beat my ass today. Mm -hmm. I, I give up today. Tomorrow, I'm going to beat your ass. I'm going to come back to you tomorrow. Right. Like, that's my mindset. So how instrumental was your manager? Because it seems like your manager is the person that was kind of on top of all the YouTube, hey, you should do this and that. And you're kind of just like the talent. So well, it was it was, uh, it was was definitely like an even a even thing. Like my, my manager handled the business, the day-to-day -day of uh, of the attention that we would get from YouTube. From YouTube. And um, I would more just be on the top of like trying to get the content and trying to, you know, get things built around just to keep putting out. Like, I'm the type of person, like, I don't have always the, the funds or the resources to put shit, or I'm not always like stats super creative to like, you know, put out something super like DIY. -ish. So like me, I'm, I'm a businessman. So if I got the bread, I'm gonna go put the, I'm gonna go pay somebody to go. Yeah, to do it. And sometimes that might take a little longer, but you know, as I'm getting older and I'm trying different ways, I'm learning as I'm going. You feel me? It's just motherfuckers just love to see you stop. And yeah. if you stop, then it's like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah, he he could have, it could have been, but that's never going to be me because like I said this is my career. I do what I do for a living, man. Right. So you from Jersey? Yeah. Let's get that clear. And it turns that's his county. Okay. That's orange that's raised me. Yeah. And orange. Yeah. So it turns out, I think you said on a previous interview, uh, your pops was in school with Joe Budden. Yeah, my my dad told me a story a long time ago. He was he's from Jersey City too. I'm um, mm -hmm. just just like Joe is. So I'm pretty sure they bumped bumped shoulders and you know had some people with similar uh, similar crews and shit. But he used to always tell me the story about how like he and him and uh, him and Joe used to go to school together. But I never I'm not, I've never been like a a a fan of people. Like I, I respect. Joe and everybody, but I've never like worshipped anybody more than God. You feel me? Of course. So I kind of just was just like, oh shit, that's dope. And I would just tell my friends and my homies and say, yeah, my dad was that, that, that. But my pops also was real cool with Wyclef Jean and okay. the Cougies. And he was actually really, really good friends with um with, with Sadek and Melky and all of those people. Like we, he's tied in with them um, just on some like family type shit, not even on no like music shit now. But so I, I believe them, you know? I believe mm -hmm. them. I never personally met met uh you know joe and him in the same room to confirm that story but yeah <laughs> it is interesting though because before all of this happened the first time i learned of you was from the podcast because he had shouted you out and then obviously that led me to your music your music is fire and boom i'm a fan so did you get like a boost when he did give you that cosign on the pod knowing that it's one of the biggest podcasts in the world right now absolutely bro definitely that shit really i want to say it is it's going to be a, like years from now bro still it's going to it's going to always be instrumental because i never forget like joe david massey they started they really like they made a fucking animal bro when they let me when they gave me them ops because i've been being told no so many times bro yeah I've been told so many times, but they made a different animal because they gave me ops and, and ways of me being myself. You feel me? That where I come from, motherfuckers say I gotta I gotta be crazy or I gotta do some or I gotta be a completely different type of way to really get those types of looks. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Nah, but yeah, you getting some looks though because you do got Spotify placements, Apple placements. So like you moving in the right place. How does it feel to like? Because, you know, when you first start out being an artist, the first thing is like, ah, I got to get all my music on DSPs, DSPs. And you see your music on DSPs, same platform as Drake and stuff like that, you lit. And yeah. then, <laughs> take it another step further, you on real playlists, like real deal playlists. How does that feel? Because that's not easy to get. 
I be, I be, I be tapped out sometimes. I don't even really be fully tapped in, bro. I ain't even gonna hold you. So when I release things, I don't really know all of the playlists that everybody listen to. I know the playlists I listen to. So it's it's definitely a humbling whenever I put music out and I see the playlist that I listen to. The music is on, like that shit. Like I be chilling in the car with you know with somebody. Yeah. Of a sudden, listen to the playlist and then my shit come. I'm just like, oh shit! I'm like, yo, you know that's me, <laughs> right? Like it, it. I don't really know how to take it, bro. Still, it's just very, very. I mean, it's an opportunity, bro. I don't think any of this shit is ever gonna get old, bro. Yeah, it's never gonna get old, nigga. I slept on floors and slept on couches. I used to sleep with my man in my man's basement under a sheet for months, like. But just so we can get to the to get to the city and do rehearsals and shit, like, you know, shit that end up not even nothing coming from it you feel me that's just the type of nigga i am and i wouldn't say that those situations empowered you but i'm sure they definitely made you like stronger mentally right they would have to yeah man I, my family been through a lot yeah There's nothing that this industry could take me through that i ain't already been through in the world that the world done already did to my family i'm here to redeem the shit that i that you know has happened to me and to my family so it's not much that could really move me from my body in this industry and you heading in the right directions because your uh, your project went crazy in 2019. Now we haven't gotten a whole lot of music. You did give us the EP, yeah. but just talk about like the recent success over the last two years of admissions and making the. I think you made the acoustic version. Yeah, I I feel like that one really embodied like your talent and just your ability to make introspective records but also records that you can just chill to mm -hmm. yeah so like how did after you made admissions i'm sure you obviously liked it enough to put it out but just the feedback you got i mean it's like two years after and i'm sure you still get people that's just discovering the project so just talk about the importance of that project uh admissions was the beginning of my legacy man it's the beginning of everything to me like I put used to as the first. I put used to out on the day that I turned. I believe I turned twenty three. I'm about to be twenty seven this year now. Mm -hmm. You know, some crazy shit. So everything like that shit is just it start it. Yeah, bro. I I don't know what you want me to say, bro. Like you know, like yeah. you are you already know. Like the same way that the same way you thinking about it is exactly how I'm thinking about it, and that's why that's the way I wanted y'all to think about it too. And that's why I, I didn't put any music out for so long because, like I said, David Massey and Joe Budden kind of sparked a different animal, bro, because I'm doing something that nobody else in this industry, coming into the industry, really has had the chance and the opportunity to do, you know? Mm -hmm. to be Yeah, I'm not getting the cosigns from the from the big, big people up on the radios and shit, but, motherfucker, do you know who, like, it does, bro, like, just to get acknowledged by one person who has, who's just as great of a person as, Probably the next motherfucker where everybody can stand up on the airwaves. That's a blessing in the sub. I got a wealth of knowledge from that dude, man. Both of them people. Both of them, bro. I got a wealth of knowledge from them people that well, every time I negotiate a deal or somebody hit me with something, it's like, yo, you got you ain't had no choice but to respect how much of a, how just how real I'm coming at you right now. I'm not coming on no shit like, yeah, I've been doing this, but about one a million, no. Yeah. I'm doing this like I got a plan, I got a I got a legacy that I'm trying to, you know, fulfill. I got I want to go on tour. I want to be on the radio. I want to do this. I want to do that. You feel me? I got shit that I need to be doing now. You feel me? And if it ain't going to be happening now, then I'm going to get that shit another way. And it's the way you talk. Like, you can you yeah. can hear it. Like, the mentality is already there. And I, I did ass think that admissions is going to be one of them ones that when we look back in about, like, three or four more years, like, that's the one. Like, that's what started what happened. Yeah. And 32, and, like, he's really here. Yeah. So I, I think it's dope. Did you did you did you feel that way during the recording process or was like <clears throat> it kind of just like this I don't know what the I don't know how they're going to receive it always my that's always my my initial process once as I get my shit going then like I this chip got on my shoulder I call it the devil get on mm -hmm. my shoulder where it's just like damn I don't know how they're going to receive it so then I got I got it in my head and I'm just like damn when I'm writing shit now it's just more so like damn do I hear this shit in the stadium do I hear this shit on, on the radio? If not, cool. Is it a radio song? Nah. It's just, I... All right, so we're going to make this shit the best fucking radio cut that is going to be then. You feel me? Or the yeah. best album cut or sleeper that is going to be. Like, right. I, that's it. Like, because I, like, I can, I'm so multifaceted, bro. I can do a song and it'll be like, oh, okay. 
All right, then I go back and, and you know double down on that song, and and it comes about super super like way more just better than what the fuck it was before. You feel me? I don't know what, what I'm getting at. That shit, my screen just paused and it, and it threw me off. I ain't even gonna hold you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it did pause, but I had to. You know, we keeping the professional. I had to keep following you. Yeah, yeah I do nah, have a man, question. That shit, I lost myself, nigga. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to play it cool, but I was like, yeah, this was not a part of the. You know, but we gonna keep it rolling. Yeah. But hey, when you make a song, what different ways do you listen to a song? Like, do you listen because obviously in the studio, it's a different vibe from listening to it with AirPods. Different vibe listening in a car. Because sometimes I'll be feeling like certain artists might listen to a song on the bigs and a speaker, but maybe they don't listen to the quality or how it sounds in air pause of the car. And all, the yeah, all two of those are like very important to the listener because that's the majority where they're going to be listening to music, either air pause or the car. So do you listen to your music everywhere once you make it? Yeah, there's a whole process that I have where it has to pass the car test, it has to pass the studio test, it gotta pass, um, it gotta pass my AirPods test, it has gotta to pass every speaker I let to listen to music, got even the TV, like when the when the EP dropped, like not even when the EP dropped, but I had the 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 masters and mixes I've been doing them since February, and uh, I was just listening to them and living with them in the car, going on road trips, just you know smoking and driving, seeing what my mind put altering my mind, you know to like you know be in the moments that like i've listened to my music before. Mm -hmm. my bad bro People no, like, let me put my shit on D D. my fault you good but yeah I, I bring it back to you know just i put my mindset into the places where like you know if i was in the club and mbg wild came on what wouldn't make me change it mm -hmm. and ultimately like i don't do what everybody else does but there's it's it's a science on the radio and with all this stuff. Like I studied engineering before I really started to do writing and singing and all that stuff. I studied audio engineering and I used to uh, you know, be really good at like, you know, singing hooks just off like almost perfect pitch type shit, you know? Mm -hmm. So like everything that I do sonically, I listen to it in so many different ways before I actually really put it out into the world. Like Lights Out used to reason I listened to to Lights Out. Lights Out was a song that was like, if I can't fuck to it completely, if mm -hmm. I can if I can't listen to it on repeat and go to sleep to it and then wake up and still want to hear that shit, or that yeah. gonna keep me up at night until I until I hear it again, then I know something off with the frequencies. Right. So you really listen to these records over and over again, over and over and over again, bro. And so because I because I already know <coughs> it's hard to get on the radio. You feel me? And I know like R and B shit, it don't really pop. It don't. It doesn't break radio as as frequently as or hip hop. Hip hop yeah. does because you know it's it's hip hop. It's fast. Yeah. Now it's in and out. So if you want to do something, something it has to be fully intentional, bro. Got to right. be intentional. You can't be saying you want to do R and B. You got to look at what's wrong in in R and B, and then look at yourself, and then see what you bring to the table. Like with me, my ear is something that I know is invaluable. It's priceless. It doesn't matter if anybody say I'm worth twenty five thousand a hundred. Nigga, sing a F F sharp right now, bro. Then that's all. I need. That's all. I, when you talking money and what my what I'm worth, and all of that shit. That's really how I, how I be coming with the shit, bro. I yeah. really do believe that this is just something that I was genuinely blessed to just have the talent to do, and like I'm just doing it because because I wanted to build it, build a business around it. I'm not doing it because I wanted to like be famous and get all that. Shit. I was already getting it, feel me, on YouTube. Yeah. I was getting a taste of all of that. Shit. I wanted to get the money. Fuck all that other shit, you feel me? All that right. other come regardless, right? So we bring things uh -huh. bring to the table, and like what's missing at the table. All these rappers and niggas, like they wanna they wanna sing. They wanna know they wanna be able to tap in more with that vulnerability. They wanna be able to like do these different types of things. Like literally yeah. two, three years ago, there was a whole fucking shift in the whole uh hip hop paradigm where all these like R rappers were talking about, yeah, I'm about to do some more R and B stuff, some more real good. I'm like, Yeah, I'm good, I'm sitting here real cool. Niggas don't yeah. give me the bag to do anything. I'm like, them rappers right there, they know it's good. And it's like, as long as I'm doing what I'm doing right now, it's like I'm bumping shoulders with the right people. Shit gonna happen inevitably, bro. Of course. I want it to be. Like, I see myself worldwide, global type, literally, like, when you're top five artists, like, of all time type shit. Like, you don't, niggas don't even know what I have to bring to the table right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm not and you in, trying to bust that shit. You in the for all your bag basket too soon. Shit, shit backfire on you too, so... And you're in the perfect era right now because, like you said, everybody's 
all the rappers are trying to put melodies into the music and things of that nature. So you kind of see like there's these hybrid artists that are like rapping using harmonies. And then you, you got, got the Disney artists, bro, doing this yeah. right now. Like I can't take nothing serious. I'm sorry. If anybody in this in this is industry wise, I you have Disney artists right now, bro. That is true. That literally come into the fucking office. Not at the office, the studio, play my music and say, I want a record that sounds like this guy. And yeah. They're going to make a fucking record that sounds like me and it's going to sound all edgy and it may have a little bit of like the Trey songs and or like a little bit of the, um, you know, I, I can't think of Trevor, Trevor. Uh, I can't think of anybody's name right now, but like, mm -hmm. like that, bro. Bro. <clears throat> it's, just, it's just, it just blows my mind. Like, we, this is really a game that we play, bro. And it's like, you can do what you want to do. Disney kids? Disney Channel, bro? <laughs> yeah. So, so how do you feel about the state of R&B right now, then, with all this stuff going on? Because, cause look, there's money, there's money, there's not as much money in music as other things, but there is money in music. So obviously, you're going to see a bunch of people that don't care about music in music. Yeah. So, like, how do you feel about the state of just R&B and just music and everything going on right now man r&b is gonna always be be it's gonna always be like it's gonna always be here it's never gonna die because it's gonna it's just that feeling it's like something that a lot of people probably won't even just naturally be able to acknowledge but music is psychology for me rapping and talking that's manifesting mm -hmm. singing that actually is 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 actually doing something to your brain i mean mm -hmm. certain frequencies you hit and everything it, it heals you on some real shit for me. So R and B ain't really going nowhere, bro. I feel like the state I just in right now is it's in a little it's in the midway. Like her did what she had to do. Ari did what she had to do. Queen doing what she had to do. Lucky doing what he had to do. And that's what all it is. Everybody that come into this shit, don't take it as a game. Like this is our legacy at the end of the day. You feel me? And then me as an R and B dude I come into the game, like I know what I have to do. Right? I know what I right. got It's like you got people like Brent, Brent doing what he gotta do. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, it's really just all about, you know, longevity and, and sustaining your career in the business. It's not about who who dick you can ride. It's not about and this, I'm sorry for my, my language. Not good, bro. I just yeah. spoke, so I'm just like on one right now. <clears throat> Straight but, off the Yeah, uh yeah, so it's not really about none of like whose coattail you can ride. At least for me it's not. It's really all about like, okay, who who can I sit at the table with, you know? Who can I really like, you know, stay afloat with? Because ain't nobody going to, you know, pull the stick, might pull the seat. Somebody might pull the seat out for you, you know? Yeah. But when you sit down, it's like, you just got to, you got to be at the fucking, you got to already know all the functions and the operations already. Period. Yeah, like, who are some of the artists in the game? You mentioned a lot. Like, who are some artists you want to collaborate with? I know right. you like to do a lot of stuff on your own because you're that talented that you can hold down the whole project, you know, by yourself. You don't need any help. But who are some of the names you would want to collaborate with in the future? Her, absolutely, like, hands down. I've already collaborated with Corday. Um, yeah. I'll work with Corday again, though, you know, if we could ever do that on some uh, on some uh, some other shit. Mm -hmm. but her, Corday, uh, Dave East is on my list. Mm. Uh, yeah, Ju no, Ju he likes those R&B records. He'd be having Trey songs and everybody on his projects. Exactly, exactly. And it's like, Dave East, got, Dave East is here for a minute. I don't feel like he even touched the pen. Like, he ain't nowhere near his 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 peak right now. Like, he still kind of, like, got a lot of the, uh, the OGs around him that's still, you know, teaching him a lot of the different shit and everything. But he about to come up in a different way, bro. That nigga about to be out here. He are mm -hmm. kind of household and shit, but he about to be real household like Meek. You feel me? Mm-hmm. He about to be on Meek status. Yeah. Meek is another one. Um, R&B wise, uh, there's an artist named Shay. Shay, I think his name is Shay Ekru. I like, I like how he writes. He's kind of like a person that I think just freestyles and just says whatever comes to his mind. Uh huh. Um, I like. Um, I'm gonna say Trev. What is this dude? His name Trevor. The guy from Blackish. You talking about Trevor Jack? I think his name is Trevor Jack. Jackson. Trevor Jackson. He ah, got okay. It. He got it. He got it with the pen and shit. You feel me? Yeah. I would love to, you know, work and do some dope shit with him. I feel like he, he could really hold his own on a, on a track with me. Um, trying to think right now. Brent, I would love to do a track with Brent. Just Brent is hard. Some young fly shit. Some young mm -hmm. in it. Um, yeah, you get on a track 
with Brent talking that shit. She was talking on admissions. <laughs> Cynthia Arnett, she's she's dope. She's one of my uh, my UK influences. I like her. Okay, dope. Beautiful voice. So you really tapped in. Mm-hmm. All all over. Kalani too. Don't forget Kalani. I think I might get Kalani and Rick on the record first before I get anybody else. I might get Kalani and Rick Ross on the record before I get anybody else. Ooh. On. Both on one record. Oh shit! If it's on one record, bro, it's oh, it's a rap, bro. Oh okay. If one, it's out of here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's not two. Cool. But if it's on one, bro, I I definitely do two. For that the sound like some smooth player shit. I, I'm rocking with one. that. What we do some like some 2021 like Maybach uh, or some Ashton yeah. Martin music or some shit like with Kaylani that'd be some fire shit, bro. Come on, come Absolutely. on now. Those things. R- me R- too. R and B needs somebody like me, bro. He said what? I said R and B needs somebody like me. I, I agree, and I like what's on out here doing what they do, but they don't. They can only do it for but so long. <laughs> and I like. I like. I just like the honesty that you have, even on like Twitter and stuff like that, because you just come shoot from the hip. It's <laughs> not anything. It's just kind of like how you feel, and I'm just gonna say it, and you can hear it in the music too. Yeah, and you're very vulnerable and open in the music. So, man, it's dope. So, we're gonna just give you a little question game. Give you. Uh, All right, you have froze, bro. What did you say? Nah, I was saying uh, we're gonna get into some questions. Okay. Some quick questions before we get you out of here. All right. But let's start first with MJ or Prince. Damn. Yeah. I'm gonna say MJ because okay. because MJ like Prince and MJ is um business wise I think they're in the same place but because um his artistic integrity it. I think he still his his greatness was still seen. It stifled him early on on in his career. Um, a lot of people didn't understand it. Whereas mm-hmm. Michael kind of just played played you know he played what he had to do and everything. And when he was ready to step out and do him as he did, then he uh, he flourished. And that's how I, I relate my my story to that a little more than I would with Prince. Got you. Yeah, Michael is nuts. Is like Michael, his whole life. It, you feel me? He was raising it all. Always did it and everything and. He was just, it was just second nature to him. So when it came down to him really being himself and standing out, you know, and letting the world see him, I would say like that, that was like probably one of the best fucking come up stories. Absolutely. One of the best come up, Michael's story is one of the best come up stories. Absolutely. Let's go Usher, Chris Brown. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Where we going, Damn. bro? <laughs> oh, shit. That's hard. I don't know, bro. That's another Michael Prince right there. Shit. Uh, I'm going to tell you what. Usher Usher really made me R&B. So I'm going to say Usher. Mm. Chris Brown. That's He definitely the go. He, like, you already know what it is. But Chris yeah, Brown. exactly. But Usher really made me like R&B. Like, he made me like that shit. Like Confessions is one of my best, like my favorite albums of all time. And even before Confessions came out, it was just like watching his career lead up to that shit was fucking phenomenal. It was a, it was a, a time to be alive for sure. That's different. That's just different. Yeah. All right, let's go because I know you you into Snowfall, Snowfall of the Wire. Ah, yeah. Snowfall. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Snowfall because I. Mm-hmm. I only because like a lot of shit on the wire like it was just a little it was just too like dread drag for me like it was just really slow yeah i was about to say the only criticism people give on the wire that it's just too slow they kind of broke everything down whereas the snowfall is like all happening at once right 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 it's all happening at once and it's like it's just some shit that you can relate easier to you don't got to follow so many different storylines and then you like like i fuck with the shot because like they they there's there whatever whatever however they write stories and shit is very similar to like how whoever wrote the wire did i don't know if they have similar creative directors or whatever mm-hmm. but um the shy kind of like dragged a little bit for me at first but now i'm addicted to it you feel me i would say the shy is like more similar to the wire than snowfall is i don't see no correlation yeah so oh, if it's the shy versus the wire which one are you taking you taking the wire the then i'm gonna say wire okay okay then i'm gonna say wire okay, i got you how about this? Billboard number one record or Grammy? Um, I'm gonna say a Grammy. 
Mm. Yeah. I feel that because that's solidified. It's it's a little different. It's a, a Grammy up your net worth. Absolutely. Every single time you perform, a uh, Grammy award winner. Yeah. They add they add a couple. Grammy nominated. Yeah. They, oh, they add a couple more zeros too. They they add a couple more zeros. Mm -hmm. All right. Record in the day or record at night? Record in the day. Okay. So you like to record around like normal work hours, basically? Yeah, whenever I got like my, my mind on, right? Or unless like if it's a big work day, then I can't wait to, to quit and, you know, go into the studio later on at night. Is it a sleep thing or what is it that makes you want to record in, during the day? Sleep. Sleep is yeah. important. To me, I take my mental health and my self care seriously. Before I used to be able to stay in the studio, I could still do that now, but you know, I got my life to the point to where you know I, I record myself, I do all my vocals in, in house. Like, anytime I'm in the studio, it's like it's really on whatever terms I want it to be. That's good that you actually care about that kind of stuff because I've been around a lot of artists and it's like, all right, 11 p.m., we finna get to the studio right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll be on that time too. If we make mm. we make the plan, but yeah, I mean, I'd rather get shit done earlier in the day so that you know I could I could eat at a decent time or go to sleep shit when I want to. Like yeah, cause it's okay every you know occasionally, but just every single time I'm like I don't know how you're gonna hold up. But right, some right. people do it though. Some people do it, you know. So everybody's different. I mean, I definitely do do my my best work when I'm like when I'm focused, but when I get tired too. I can kick in. I can kick into another gear. So like the late sessions is like I don't like them no more because I've been in that shit too. Like most of my sessions for the first like five years of my life of my career was like late night sessions, or like you know trying to like get get the studio when when everybody gone. You feel me? Right, right. That's really what the late sessions be on for me. Like I was just on that shit trying to get the time, trying to get the free time. Mm hmm. And now it's like, I don't really need to do that shit no more. Because even back then, I was working, bro. I was working a nine to five. Like, I used to work in hotels. I worked uh, for a long time for, like, this whole... You gotta, yeah, you got to balance that. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people think... I think a lot of people think that when you want to be an artist, you just magically just stop working, and you're supposed to get enough money to survive and just chase the dream. Like, nah, you still got to provide <laughs> money. You still got responsibilities, <laughs> even with an artist. You gotta I was when I when I dropped used to. I was working in uh, in Times Square at the at the Sheridan on mm. on seven, and um, you know that really got my helped me get my bag up though. Like yeah, I, I put used to out, and then my my next plan was like to go work in the city so I can start making at least sixty or more. Mm -hmm. You know, and I did that. Worked there for like a year, saved my bag up, quit that shit, and then I sold out my first show. The week right. of my job. As you as you should. That's that's some rock star shit right there. <laughs> that's rock star shit, nigga. <laughs> rock star shit. All right. We inside or outside this summer, bro. Oh, we outside. Yeah, we outside, right? We outside, outside. It's time to it's time to go pop out, man. Yeah, sure. We popping the fuck out, bro. Exactly. I'm gonna be in ATL most of the summer. Oh, for real? Yeah. You already know how that is, man. Yeah, sure. Yeah. ATL in Houston. Mm-hmm. All right, bro. Cole or Kendrick? Because I know you like it. You get real into, into hip hop, and I know you fuck with Cole. Cole. Damn. I love Cole, man. I love Cole. Why do niggas always want to put Cole and Kendrick up against each other, bro? I don't get that shit. I'm getting mad now. Like, come on, man. You're not bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. It's like, it's like in the future, niggas going to be like MBD Wild, August Alcina. Right. <laughs> Who? Who is it? Like, man, come on. Why can't you? August gonna always be, be the it's, best. Cause he why fuck, can't you like both? <laughs> fuck Jada. <laughs> uh, ah, shit. Um, damn. Let me, let me make a decision. Let me start playing. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Cole. Cause you know, Cole got me through a lot of my times. Kendrick taught me a lot about rapping when, when I didn't want to be a singer and an artist. Um, I was just studying his flows and shit. All right, last one. Five things you can't leave the house with. Lighter, wallet, phone, keys, and gum. <laughs> basics. The fucking basics. The basics. Lighters, phone, keys, wallet, and my gum. Right, right, right. Yeah, and maybe some visine, you feel me? Yeah. But look, it's been it's been cool to, to kick it with you, bro. Cool, cool dude. Makes great music. 
and you just sticking with the music, no extra shit, nothing, you know, all the other stuff that you know goes around. You just kind of just sticking to the script, and I think everybody can respect that. I know I can, and just hearing you like your mentality, the way you talking about, nah, I gotta handle business. I'm a CEO. I'm trying to stay out the way and do what I gotta do. Yeah. Um, we can, we can all respect that. Thank you. We appreciate your talent, bro. We already know what time it is with you. And waiting on more music. I know you had you know a life shit situations that led you to not like drop a bunch of music. Yeah. The last yeah, but we know what time it is, though. You know, y'all know what time it is now, though. Trust me, I'm not in that space. No, we never gonna be in that place no more. Cause it was life shit, but at the same time, it was like shit. I just had to also learn and get and get understanding about the industry. You feel me? Right. Like, when I told you, you know, David Matt just like like really unleashed a, like a he they unleashed some uh, fucking monster in me, man. Mm -hmm. I came into the industry owning all my masters. Like yeah. I listened to Joe what Joe Button said on the pod. I listened to everything, you feel me? I studied that nigga. And like when David Massey, like I told him my story where I came from, you know, and a lot of things that I've been through, you know, he understood why, you know, I was asking for what I was asking for because coming from where I come from, there is no way out of that bitch, bro. Yeah. And if anybody got the can literally look me in my eyes and tell me, yo, sorry, no. That's like saying, I right, I don't give a fuck about you. Yeah. To me. You feel me? Yeah. So they unleashed another a, a monster with me because I got this mentality that regardless of whether people fuck with me or not, nobody going to ever give a fuck about my shit and me and my shit as much as I do. You feel me? And as much as those two did to give me the same opportunity. like. And you respect them so much, you're going to keep going just for them giving you the opportunity. So I'd be dumb not to, bro. Exactly. I'd be really stupid not to, like, I remember he was telling me about Jesse Reyes, um, David yeah. before I signed. David Massey is the, is the CEO of um, Arista, Sony Aristos, and he signed me to that to that label. And he told me about Jesse Reyes, and you know how if you are familiar with Jesse Reyes, you just understand how like she's just really a no bullshit type of artist. She loved the music, and but she's a little weird. You feel me? So it's like you know she wanted to make sure she has the freedom to, to be creative. How she wanted to be creative, you feel me? Like mm -hmm. I like. I like getting dressed. I like being fly. You feel me? I like I like being different. I like doing shit that's not everybody else going to be able to, you know, have a boss to do type right. of shit. And they see that in me. You feel me? So I really just want to continue to make them proud. That's all. Right. Like I'm making my family proud right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, shit, bro. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know you got other shit to do. But we appreciate Last you. Last what? Yeah, honestly. Yeah, but now nah, I, I got another call actually at eight thirty. Oh, okay. Wait, what? I said I have a call at eight thirty. Oh, okay, like, got it. All my time. Yeah, but like, uh, we appreciate you, bro. When the album, when the next album, next project comes out, we got to come back and kick it and talk about the project and see everything going on. But yeah, bro, appreciate you for popping up with us, talking, kicking it, cool that dude, good ass music. We fuck Thank with you, bro. Yeah. All right. But I right, take it. <laughs> All right, bro. Yeah. That was a nobody interview. What'd y'all think, man? Was there any questions that y'all wanted him to answer that I didn't ask? What's up? Did y'all like the interview? Well, anyways, guys, yeah, he's he's hard. He's hard. Super talented. Yeah, he's a cool dude, man. He's he's a super cool dude. Cause sometimes you meet artists and then just a little like, not weird, cause everybody's you know, everybody's different, but you know, a certain standoffish or this and that. But real cool dude, makes great music. Y'all go, y'all go stream his project. Um, admissions and his EP Tunnel Vision. Go check out his videos on YouTube. Nobody in BDY. Um, this is dope, man. I hope y'all enjoyed the interview and, and more coming soon. We appreciate y'all. Yeah. I 
After this, the price definitely gotta go up. Oh! Yeah.